uh, Rambo and that oh, 1982, yeah. nobody I don't know, really probably a lot of people sort of know this story. Nobody wanted to do this movie. It was a cursed project that had been through the most elite actors from top to bottom. And then it finally got to me. And I looked at this and I went, wow, this is amazing. This is a man who's at war unwittingly and unwillingly with his own country. Mm -hmm. uh, he, it's like the Frank, I, I saw this as the Frankenstein monster. Mm -hmm. They built him and then he turns around. But he draws the line. In the book, Rambo was a savage, complete sociopath and psychopath, and had to be put down. And I felt that's really not the right portrayal of our servicemen. And I thought, can we just sort of make him one foot in society and one foot as an outcast? He could hurt you, he could kill you, but he doesn't. He chooses just to go to the edge. And that way, other soldiers who are suffering from this ailment wouldn't feel like, oh, God, the only hope is that someone kills me. <laughs> and they deserve better than that. Much better. And, it, and it's so relevant now. It, yeah. It's almost like you're psychic because yeah. now, with mental health issues and, be, and, and with, you know, the veterans that we have oh, in, in this day. It's unbelievable. Well, there's so many veterans in, in America sleeping in cars and home. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it really is. You would think, come on back, here's a house. Thank you very much. You yes. know, like, let me, yeah. Forever. You know? But it, it's also interesting because when you did the movie, you weren't really going out there to make some political, not a direct political oh, no, statement. no, 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 no. You were Never. making a movie, a heartfelt movie. I, 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 it, it comes out sometimes that way, but I'm not, I am not a political creature, never have been. Uh, you know, I think may the best person win. That's the way I roll with it. But the fact that he's military yeah. automatically puts him in a certain uh, category. But even he doesn't think of himself as a soldier. He just wanders the world. He's in mm -hmm. Afghanistan, he's there, he's in the jungles. He's kind of like this wandering, lonely, you know, guy. A, a, a real noble savage. And I think yeah, the girls, the noble a noble <laughs> savage that, that got to all of us, really. And um, the one thing we, we see and we remember about Rambo, in all the Rambos, is obviously your, your physical sculpturing that you, you managed to do. I don't know how. And I have mentioned this fact. I have mentioned it before because oh, no, it was no. pretty low. But, we, but, but you were sculpted. It was amazing. Um, and... It's not just physical, but mental as well. It must have been so demanding for you, and location-wise. Mm. You had some extremes in all the different locations of where you film Rambo. I do, I, I do. Some, some actors just are chameleon-like, then some are brilliant, like Daniel Day-Lewis, and guys are just unbelievable. And they literally inhabit the part. I, I try to change physically with my weight, because mm -hmm. I think when you have 30 or 40 pounds difference, you, you think different, you move different. And then I started to realize this guy doesn't speak. He speaks with his body. So everything is athletic and movement is looking like a cat. Yeah. Very, very little dialogue. So that's where I focus. Yeah. Also, I, <laughs> I've learned the hard way. The more I speak, the less people understand. So I, <laughs> I just, yeah, let me put this stupid headband on and keep my mouth 